Watson stays on the field. The Giants are going for two. They're going for the win with 106 to play. Now listen, if it pans out, it's the gutsiest call of all time. So quick question, quick question before I get into this video. And I would appreciate it in the comments down below. I want to know what some of your expectations are with the New York Giants going into the 2024 season. What do you expect to see? Just let me know in the comments down below. There's there's some there's some topics that I want to talk about, but I'm really trying to get or get a sense of what a lot of people are thinking, because to me, there's some people and we're all over the place. Depending on how you feel about the New York Giants currently, how the roster is formed right now, there are different expectations out there. So I want to know in the comments down below, you know, what are some of your expectations? Because I would like to get into these conversations probably in the next couple of videos. Or if you have any kind of topic that you want to talk about, would like me to talk about to get the opinion of, of or get my opinion about the topic, go ahead and put that in the comments down below. One thing I will say is this. Fresh off of the draft, I'm not really trying to talk about next year's draft. I'm not trying to talk about some college players and stuff like that. There's some guys that I'll be looking at because I just like college football all, all together. But I'm not ready to have these college football conversations right now at this at this point in time, respectfully. But with that being said, hello and welcome to Big Dash Knows. Big Dash Knows what? New York Giants football. Let's go. Last time I didn't say that. Last time I was trying to figure out what I knew. Because some people are telling me some crazy things in, in, in the comments. All of a sudden, I become a Giants hater, or I just hate, not even a Giants hater, I just hate certain play No, I'm a New York Giants fan. First team first will always be team first over any individual player. That's why I stand. And uh, I guess you guys can use that as you may. So let's talk about one, things that I, one thing that I did want to talk about. I did want to talk about expectations for this wide receiver room. I did want to talk about that. So, of course, pick six was Malik Neighbors. Fantastic prospect. Some people have him arguably the best wide receiver in the draft. In any other draft that did not have Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors is your number one. Now, some people like to compare him uh, to Odell Beckham because he went to LSU. Some people like to compare him to Jamar Chase because he went to LSU. Um, I actually like the Jamar Chase comparison more than uh, the Odell Beckham comparison. But I also have another comparison for me in the way I think he'll be used with the New York Giants. And that's a people that New York Giants fans have come to hate. And that's CeeDee Lamb. And not saying that he's CeeDee Lamb coming out of college, you know, at Oklahoma. No, I'm talking about the way CeeDee Lamb is used at Dallas as their number one wide receiver that plays a majority of his snaps in the slot or can be absolutely dangerous in the slot, I see Malik Neighbors in that same way. Now, yes, I know you have Wondell Robinson as a slot receiver. I know you have Jalen Hyatt, who can also play inside and out. But when I look at Malik Neighbors, yes, he can be an X. Yes, he can do that. But when you look at what he did in college, especially this last year, he had 1,500 yards receiving, 990 of those yards, or 900, yeah, 900, came in the slot, came in the slot, and you saw a majority of those highlights, those big plays, he was lined up or they started in the slot. And again, yes, I know we have Wondell Robinson as a slot receiver. He's more of the gadgety type, pure slot receiver. He's not really giving you, you know, any kind of outside snaps. And will that clash between what you want to do with Malik Neighbors and, you know, what you can do with Wondell Robinson? And I posed this question before and I've talked to people about it, got some ideas, you know, from people about, you know, what's the best place for Malik Neighbors? Now, here's the thing. You can always put him on the outside. He has that capability. You can always you can always end up putting him there. But really, when you think about it, we're talking about. Uh, this year's first round pick, arguably the best wide receiver in the draft. You you don't want to 
say, oh, I have Wondell Robinson. Let me just put Malik Neighbors out there in the, out outside because, you know, Wondell Robinson, that's his spot to be inside like that. No, I'm, I'm not going for all that because then that tells me that ultimately you're, value, you're valuing um, Wondell Robinson snaps over Malik Neighbors. In my, at least in my opinion, that's what you're saying. But I just look at CeeDee Lamb. And again, us as Giants fans, we remember these Dallas games. We remember how bad CeeDee Lamb was torturing, you know, the defense, our secondary. And I absolutely see how Malik Neighbors can be our CeeDee Lamb with the ability, because again, as a prospect coming out of college, he is better than what CeeDee Lamb was. Can he get the targets? That's another question. But if he can get the targets, if we if we can scheme him open or whatever we need to do to get that man the ball, I believe that whatever C.D. Lamb is doing right now, and again, he's playing at a very high level, within a year or two, Malik Neighbors can surpass that. That's, that's how I believe, that's what I believe, or how strongly I believe in the talent of Malik Neighbors. And again, Malik Neighbors was not my first choice in regards to a new york giants receiver or what the new york giants needed at a, as a uh, receiver i was leaning more towards roma dunze because he gives you that 50 50 that large catch radius this that and the third you know a guy that you can just throw it up and he goes he's going to come down with it um when you got malik neighbors that's pure explosion pause you know um a game breaker every time the ball is in his hands type deal and that's what we have now and also Malik Neighbors is a New York Giant. Roma Dunze isn't. So with that, with just that part of my bias, absolutely Malik, Malik Neighbors needs to be featured, featured a lot, you know, in this um, in this offense this upcoming season. We can't do what we did with Jalen Hyatt saying, oh, you know, he's he's not getting, he's not grasping the playbook, you know, soon enough. I need Malik Neighbors ready to go day one and i said that in the previous video i need malik neighbors to be ready week one i'm not talking about help i'm talking about in this scheme brian dable mike kafka Tay uh Shearney. i need malik neighbors up to speed no restrictions on the playbook no no restrictions on the route tree i want him ready to go week one and there's no reason why he couldn't and there's no reason why brian dable can't scheme him open that goes to my next point when you add a weapon when you add a weapon like malik neighbors to the offense no matter what this offense looks like last year we had jalen hyatt out there and they were shading him over the top every time he was out there they were so scared and again he did not prove a thing really we, when you look at the numbers the numbers are pedestrian i like i like jalen hyatt but when you when Every time he was on the field, shade over the top. Not every time, but most of the time. They were worried about the real speed of Jalen Hyatt. And you would think that, again, me going into the 2023 season, coming off of that offseason, and you added Darren Waller, I was thinking, okay, Darren Waller's going to take eyes. And then Jalen Hyatt, Darius Slayton, will be able to cap, um, capitalize on people just eyeballing Darren Waller. It didn't work out that way. But now when you're looking at when you're looking at Malik Neighbors and you're, you're not going to be able to shade. Go over the top for Jalen Hyatt like like they were last year, because guess what? If you do that, Malik Neighbors is killing whoever is in front of him. So for me, I'm like. If the my lineup in my head is this and again, I'm just talking bald. I did not go in and try to script this episode or anything like that. This is just me talking, freestyling with you guys, vibing with you guys like I normally do. So for me, I'm thinking, and I had this discussion again on another on another channel. You put you put Malik Neighbors in the slot. You put Jalen Hyatt on the outside. Now, is it going to be Darius Slayton on the other side? Is it going to be? Isaiah Hydens in certain formations on the other side. I really, it really doesn't matter to me. But as soon as you, if you, if you're putting, if you're putting Malik Neighbors in the slot and you're putting Jalen Hyatt aside, what is what is the safety in the cornerback on that side going to do? What is the safety? How 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 does he play that? How does he play that? Because you have a nickelback, a a slot corner going against 
Malik Neighbors, and normally your slot corner or all the time your slot corner is not your number one cornerback. In most cases, he is your third cornerback. When you're looking at the depth chart, you might have a nickel cornerback that's absolutely great at being, you know, a nickel. But again, we're talking about Malik Neighbors here. So to me, I'm using Malik Neighbors in the slot. Now you can have those certain plays with Wondell Robinson. You can motion them. Maybe you maybe you motion them out of the backfield. You know, there's different ways to use Wondell Robinson, but the real threat of Malik Neighbors in the slot is what I'm thinking about. It's, it's, it's absolutely what I'm thinking about. And um, I would love to know what you guys think about that. What you guys think about that? So um, for me, I like the way that the wide receiver room is shaping out on paper. Um, we saw a little bit of an emergence of Wondell Robinson. He's getting some respect around the league. Uh, funny thing is, um, the guy that I just talked about is a comparison from league neighbor, C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb gave some kudos to Wondell Robinson. You know, he said game recognized game, whatever he said in those terms. But he's saying that guy, that Wondell Robinson is a player. I respect that. You have a division rival and a guy that's a pretty good damn wide receiver in the league. You know, giving one of our wide receivers kudos, even if our fan base doesn't want to give him a lot of kudos. But again, rightfully so, because we saw glimpses of what Wondell Robinson can bring. In some in some cases, you know, he was he was take he took over a few games, or I should say, a few different um series. And now you have Malik Neighbors, you know, you have Jalen Hyatt. This is a very young nucleus that somebody is going to get to enjoy for years to come in my opinion um whether it be daniel jones that's one thing uh whether it be another quarterback not, but but you're gonna have the pieces here or the piece i should say the pieces are here for you to build you can't say that there's no weapons on the team anymore i consider wandell robinson a weapon um i can i consider jalen hyde even though we didn't use him to his full capacity last year as a weapon um i of course i believe that malik neighbors is a weapon and then that goes to what do we have in the inside? So I'm thinking about the tight ends. Daniel Bellinger is back. Hopefully he gets back into his role, the same role he has as a rookie. We have Theo Johnson, a young um, tight end that we also picked up, can give you some, give you something in the receiving game as well. Um, there's targets on the field, and I'm not saying that there there wasn't a lack of targets last year either. Um, but circumstances were what circumstances uh, were, and guys didn't get the ball like they should have last year. We can argue about that in the comments down below as well. But that's just my quick thoughts on, you know, how I think Malik Neighbor should be played, you know, in this offense. Again, I see him as the CD Lamb of the New York Giants, but the, with the with the possibility of being even better um, because the skill set is there. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. How would you use Malik Neighbors in this Giants offense? Um, can't wait to see what you guys say, you know, down in the comment section. But with that being said, I want to thank everybody for vibing with me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And from one Giants fan to another, this is Big Dash Knows, Big Blue Nation. Let's go.